Now, I'm going to go over in this video several different uh, ways of screening for plaque, the pros, the cons, and I'll actually even show you a way that you can do it yourself, a DIY plaque detection. You know, if uh, plaque is the major cause of heart attacks, then it's the number one killer. If it's the major cause of strokes, it's the number one disabler. If it's a big cause of Alzheimer's, it's pretty important, isn't it? But you know what's interesting? So, uh, have you been to the doc to ask him, do I have plaque? And what kind of answer did you get? Most of the time you'll get, well, you probably do, depending on your age and whether or not you have diabetes or insulin resistance. But then you'll also get, well, why don't we do a stress test? Because, you know, a stress test will tell you whether you have plaque in your heart, right? Wrong. It doesn't. A stress test only tells you, uh, you'll only have a stress test if you've got more than 50% of the arteries in your heart occluded. In other words, um, blocked. But guess what? 68% of heart attacks occur in people with less than 50% blockage in their heart. So what, if it only picks up people with 50% or more blockage and the majority of heart attacks occur with less than 50% blockage, what good is a stress test? I can tell you some things like exercise tolerance, but it certainly doesn't tell you that much about predicting heart attacks and strokes. You know, if you don't believe me, look up the Tim Russert case. Now, I'm going to go over in this video several different uh, ways of screening for plaque, the pros, the cons, and I'll actually even show you a way that you can do it yourself, a DIY plaque detection. So here we go. <clears throat> this, by the way, is a picture from a video uh, by Stanford. Stanford 25 is Stanford's focus on getting back to the patient, touching the patient, some of those physical exam skills that we've lost in the past. And they've got one uh, video specifically on ABI, ankle brachial index. We'll talk about that in just a minute. You can actually do one at home. But first of all, let's talk about peripheral artery disease. Um, what is that? Well, peripheral is, is outside of the heart, outside of the central area. So why am I talking about that? Let's go back and talk for a minute about plaque. So again, if it's the major cause of MI stroke, or MI meaning heart attack, stroke and Alzheimer's, then it's important. How do we screen for and measure coronary plaque? Well, again, stress tests, five million a year, and they don't work. PC angiogram, uh, what is that? Percutaneous, through the skin. In other words, you gotta go to the cath lab, and they inject dye. They put a catheter all the way up through your femoral artery, and uh, snake it up into your heart, then pass the valve, the aortic valve, and, um, inject dye into the vessels of your heart. Now, that works, and it works very well, but do you really want to go through that? About a million people uh, per year go through that as well, by the way. So, but let's, I mean, that's not a, obviously never going to be a screening test for a 30-year-old who's asymptomatic. How about a calcium score? Well, a calcium score is a screening test. Can it show progress? It can somewhat, but I mean, you see my nonverbals here. It's not really good. It doesn't quantify very well. You do have your Agatson score, and I'll, I've been over those in other videos. But again, who wants to do one of these on a young person? They do have radiation. So, okay, I mean, again, it's it, there's some good... Uh, a good advantage to it. One of the advantages is it's relatively inexpensive and you can get it almost anywhere. Let's go to the next one, CT angiogram. There's a, actually some good research coming out about CT angiogram recently. Um, 
One of them is the Scott Hart study. They got some really good information out of a CT angiogram. In other words, it's using a CT, a compu computerized tomography, to look at the actual vessels of the heart and see whether it can, can detect or measure plaque. The price is expensive. Hopefully, it'll, it will continue to drop. It's currently between 300 and 900 uh, if you look on the internet. The research, research base is not quite there yet. So all of these that I've mentioned so far are trying to look at the actual artery in the heart. You know, and one of the problems, and they had that problem with development of the CT angiogram, and your cardiologist has that problem when he's uh, snaking that cath up in the cath lab. Not only is there the pulse of the um, blood going through the the artery of the heart, the heart itself is pumping. So you're, you've got to get, you've got to hit something that is a moving target, moving 60 to 80 times per minute or more. So that brings us to peripheral plaque. Uh, again, that's plaque in this artery, the carotid, plaque down in uh, the arteries down to the legs and feet. And those are actually the next two that we'll talk about because there are ways to measure plaque there. I've mentioned it several times, CIMT, carotid intima media thickness test. That's where you take ultrasound and look at the artery uh, in the neck. And then uh, ABI, ankle brachial index. Why would we look peripherally? Again, uh, plaque is not a local disease. It doesn't happen in a local artery. It happens throughout the body. It's a biochemical thing. If you've got diabetes usually or insulin resistance or the major things that cause inflammation, you will get plaque. So here's the, here's the way to do your own at home, ABI. Step one, get an automated blood pressure cuff. You may do, uh, need to get a large cuff for your ankle because the bladder in the cuff needs to go around oh, uh, significantly over half of uh, the circumference. Step two, lie on the bed for five minutes. Step three, measure your arm pressure. Step four, measure your ankle pressure. Uh, step five, repeat uh, at least for at least three measurements in each area. Here's what I got. Uh, this was my arm. I, I guess which one it was. This, this was my arm. 110 over, 111 over 58, 111 over 65, 110 over 62. And this was my ankle. Pardon the, again, I always have image uh, video problems. Um, I could not get the, the way I was lying on the bed, I could not get the shadow of the um, of the iPhone off of the front of that Omron. The uh, ankle uh, numbers were 128, uh, 117, 127. So as you see, uh, there was a significant decrease in systolic uh, blood pressure. That's again what we're doing, You're comparing the ankle to the brachium or the arm in terms of blood pressure. Now, when you go back and you look, um, so my number was higher than one. Basically what you do is you put the ankle over the brachial or the ankle over the arm. And mine was uh, over one, so I'm normal. Well, not always. Maybe, I don't mean that I'm not always normal and that's, that's true, but it's a different issue. But um, sometimes people can get a very high ankle brachial index when they actually have very significant problems. There's actually studies which show that People that have uh, a lot of severe arterial disease can actually have an unusually high ABI. And that's because the pipes, are, the pipes, the arteries going down to the legs and ankles are just so, uh, they're rigid and stiff. Those people actually have been shown to be at greater risk for, um, for amputation in some of the research. Now, when I say that, amputation, am I worried about me having amputation because I've got a normal number? No, actually I'd be far more concerned if I had a number less than one. And uh, how do you interpret it then? If it's over one, how do you know whether you're in the normal category or you're one of those people with really severe arterial disease? Well, it's simple. I mean, if you're at the uh, let me give you a, an example. On a, I go walking every day, and twice a week I do um, high-intensity intervals. And my intense part of my interval is a 
10 mile per hour or six minute per mile run up about a 0.5% gradient. I don't do that for long. I don't, don't do a whole mile. I couldn't do a whole mile that way, I don't think. Maybe if a bear was after me, I could. But my point is, if I had peripheral vascular disease, I would not be able to do even one minute at that level of, uh, of intensity. So I know then that I can go back and interpret this and say, I don't have significant peripheral disease. So I hope this has been helpful and uh, thank you for your interest. Hey, if you're interested in a two day boot camp type of environment where you get your CIMT, you get all your labs, and we spend two days going over the whole thing. Check out our event. It's November 8th and 9th at Louisville. Great place to fly into in November at the University of Louisville.